So the first CFP rankings were revealed about, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes ago. So first rankings of the year are out. And what a Halloween treat we have with this week. Of course, week nine recap. Got to talk about that. So Oregon State had a bizarre field goal play. Came back to haunt them against Arizona. Um, Kansas. Devin Neal, Jason Bean, they, they were able to outdo the Sooners in Lawrence, Kansas. They took the goalpost down, threw it in the river. Uh, not a great game from Dylan Gabriel. In fact, he wasn't even on the field that much. Again, Kansas' ball control was on point. Lance Leopold did what he needed to do, which was get the win. And again, it was resilient because, you know, the Jayhawks were – you know, after the weather delay and everything like that, the Jayhawks lost a lot of that momentum, gained it back, lost it again with the turnovers and everything like that, and then gained it back one more time just to get the W. Um, speaking of defenses that couldn't, you know, stay the course, North Carolina's failed again. You know, Drake made can do it all on offense. But again, it came. It and again, this is what I said coming into the year. It was going to come down to this North Carolina defense, and it failed a second straight the second straight week, and against Georgia Tech again, no less. So, Iowa fans, you know, at least you're free from Brian Ferentz. You are free. You can evolve your offense after the 2023 season. So, hopefully, it evolves. The ACC schedule, the new ones for like the next seven years, they're out, but we'll see how long it lasts with the way things have been going. Um, USC and Washington, they, they survive you know, the teams that are going to the ACC and, and Cal and Stanford, respectively. It was rough. Oregon stopped a mud hole in Utah and Warren Harrison Jr. is the only playmaker for the number one ranked, yes, you heard that right, number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. So the Buckeyes are ranked number one as you look at the slate for this week. You know, Ohio State is number one. Um, I'm going to be watching Crown Jewel. So, you know, I'm going to flip on Ohio State Rutgers for an hour. Keep my eyes on that ranked matchup early. That's Kansas State and Texas. And there's some other matchups in the early window as well, including the number 10 Ole Miss Rebels you know, A&M. Um, and A&M. In between, you know, the early games and the mid-afternoon games is the first leg, you know, of the Commander of the Chiefs Trophy has been sealed. So how about that second leg, Army and Air Force? Yes, the 25 Air Force will be playing. And then in the mid-afternoon, oh boy, Missouri, Georgia, number 12, Missouri, number 2, Georgia, and then number 9, Oklahoma, number 22, Oklahoma State, Bedlam. Beautiful stuff. And then late, you know, there's some other games, but late, 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 you know, as late as it can get because I'm not, I'm not subjecting myself to Pac-12 at the dark because... UCLA and Oregon State are basically out of the discussions for the CFP. So no reason to really talk about those two games. But the two games we do need to look at, Washington, USC, and LSU, Alabama. So let's talk, you know, let's talk week 10. Let's talk week number 10. Um, let's start with the Georgia-Missouri um, matchup. And again, Dijon Edwards, Lat McConkey. You know, they've been playing well. McConkey had a 100-yard game for the first time in a long time last week. Carson Beck's been playing pretty efficient. You know, still got to clean some things up, but he's been pretty efficient. And, again, Georgia, you know, they can't exploit a defense through their passing game. They have a lot of guys that can get the ball. But, you know, this is this is a Missouri defense that can, you know, they, they – they will fire back at you because you have three talented wide receivers at Theo Ruiz, Luther Burton, and Mookie Cooper, along with Cody Trayer, a really good back who's ran for I think I think he's ran for a touchdown every week, the past few weeks, if not the entire season. And of course, Brady Cook leading the way for the Missouri Tigers. And again, Missouri only has one loss, and 
this could be this could be big. This could be big for the Tigers. I haven't seen this amount of craziness in quite some time. You know, to where Missouri is like, wow, this is a Missouri team, and it's been ten years, really, since Missouri has been relevant in the national landscape. You know, so we'll see what happens. You know, at the at this game right here. Um, you know, moving on to the. Wildcats lit by Will Howard, DJ Giddens. Of course, you know, the Wildcats come into Austin 6-2, ranked number 23 in the nation. And Malik Murphy, he did all right. He did all right. Had some turnovers, but he cleaned it up. It was more so, of course, about John Brooks yet again. I mean, what can you say about John Brooks that has been said already and is playing like B. John from last year in Rojo? You know, he's playing very good football. And the defense, yet again, stuff BYU kept BYU out of the end zone, really, for the most part. And it, 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 it was a good win for Texas. It was a little struggle win, but, you know, it didn't feel like 35-6, you know, for the most part at times. You know, it eventually got 35-6, but at times it didn't feel like that. So this is going to be... One of Texas' toughest remaining tests. And, you know, the race for the Big 12 championship is not going to be easy. And Kansas State is one of those teams that's in the mix right now, along with Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas and Oklahoma State. They're all in the mix for a Big 12 championship. Louisville is going to have to face a Virginia Tech team that's, you know, both these teams are tied for second place. In the ACC, both these teams have one conference loss. FSU has none. So, you know, it's it's going to be weird. A weird game, I'll tell you that much. You know, 4-4 four and four Virginia Tech. Oh, what do you think? Oh, that doesn't mean anything. It does. Ollie Murphy, we ain't been talking about this man the past couple weeks, but he's really inserted himself in. <laughs> and, you know, he's garnered up nearly 300 yards of offense by himself the past, you know, and it's been every game for like the past four games he's been putting up staggering numbers, you know, like 284, 286, 289, 282. You know, he's been putting up nearly 300 yards by himself the past four games. That's like 1,200-something yards the past four games. And he could do the same Thing to Oklahoma's defense, and the Sooners are going to need more than Dylan Gabriel to just step up. You know, you have you've had some wide receivers. You know, they've been playing pretty good football, but you know they need more. You know, Stoops, Farouk. You know, the running game has been non-existent. I'm just going to say that right now. The running game, aside from Dylan Gabriel, has been non-existent. I'm just going to say that right now. Oklahoma needs that back. They need that type of thing back with them. You cannot rely on Dylan Gabriel the entire game. You have to run the ball effectively. And and if Oklahoma continues to not run the ball effectively, that's not going to win you games. You know, you have to have some semblance of a running game. And then, of course, you know, late, the other game that's very late, you know, one of the other games, or not, not talking about Oklahoma, that's in the middle, um, you know, Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, two middling defenses. Washington has played worse the past few weeks. Stanford, Arizona State, you know. Well, Arizona State wasn't really that bad, but I mean, Arizona State, you know, had the opportunities. It's just the turnovers for, for Arizona State. But Stanford game, ugh. Um, Oregon game, I, I can kind of forgive them for that because, I mean, Bo Nix and company – just they just shred everybody in terms of yardage, but you know it, it's it, it's it. The Washington defense has been playing you know a lot worse at times, and something's got to give against a USC defense that has not been playing well at all. They needed Cal to make a comedy of errors late to win that game. And of course, Alabama. Trying to prove they're a contender still. You know, they're ranked pretty highly themselves, but, you know, Nick Saban's going to have to have Jalen Milrow play well against Jay Daniels, Malik Neighbors, 
Uh, I mean, I mean uh, Logan Diggs. I mean, it, it's it's a talented LSU team. You know, defense isn't always the greatest for LSU, and neither is Alabama. Alabama's defense hasn't looked the greatest either. We're gonna find out who's gonna be closer and closer to the SEC championship as far as this game concerned. If LSU wins this game, that spells doom for Alabama. That spells a little bit of doom. It's going to be behind LSU. It's behind Ole Miss. So, you know, there's this going to be some wonkiness. If Alabama wins this game, they are in the right direction as far as winning the SEC goes. So, again, the SEC West is going to be huge as far as this game goes. And, again, going back to these rankings, I'm not surprised these rankings really at all. I expected Oklahoma State to kind of slide up in there along with Kansas State. Now, pretty much everybody else stayed the same. You know, the group of five teams, they're going to be ranked at the bottom. You know, of course, that, that was to be expected. You know, Tulane right now has the lead, I guess. Uh, even though the American is noticeably weaker, it's 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 a weaker conference aside from, like, Memphis and UTSA. Uh the Mountain West a little bit stronger this year, and I don't know if I expected, you know, you know, I don't know if I expected, you know, something like this. I did say that the group of five bit would come out of the Mountain West. I think, I think I said that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I did. I, I remember saying something along those lines. As I said, Boise is not that team from the Mountain West. Somebody else is going to have to be that team. Um, but Tulane. Pretty good, you know. They're they're gonna have to play, you know, a little bit better, close out these games. You know, don't feel like they're number twenty four. You can just flip Air Force and Tulane, but whatever, you know. Because I mean, Air, Tulane hasn't been closing out games. Air Force has, you know. It's it's ticky tacky as far as SOS goes. It's kind of ticky tacky in the first place. It's, you know, the Americans still not very good anymore, and the Mountain West. Has stayed pretty much the same. It's just, you know, there may be some perceptions as far as some teams concerned. You know, I don't think I'm surprised that Georgia and Michigan are like two and three and Florida State's number four, but I mean, it is what it is. You know, I think we all expected Georgia to be, you know, maybe number one or Michigan, you know. But Ohio State being number one because they have the best resume, that, that's fine with me. So, you know, it all works out. So, I'm going to get on out of here, get on the skedaddle, and y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's Halloween. You know, we still got a couple hours left, so if you're trick-or-treating, you know, have fun. Don't, don't do anything dangerous. Don't see any clowns. I'll see you all November 1st when the calendar flips to talk the NFL. Take care, everybody.